Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Jam DiMatteis, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I'm here for Peter. He's like to hear from a good Spider-Man writer. Anyway... Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Spider Cast. Uh, we got lots to talk about today in Miller May. Miller May mayhem indeed, my friend. May, may, may. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that threat, that menace, it is. Uh, me? Lil Hellfire? Yeah. <laughs> Who, me? Couldn't be. <laughs> Who, me? That's why you have to be on camera anymore. You're like, who, me? <laughs> That's right, kids. Miller May continues uh, to review of Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 15. And uh, the new issue. Oh, we're going to get to Amazing Spider-Man 24, kids. It's going oh, to hit Ryan hit Cronin print. check. Let me see if he's doing any Frank Miller. <laughs> ah. <laughs> No, no, I don't think yeah, Frank Miller was on any uh, 70s TV, so maybe we should be good. Uh... Nobody's help, Brian! Okay, yeah, I don't see anything for 2023. Good. Sometimes it takes him a, a while to catch up, but, you know. <laughs> Where I forget what... I forget what the topic was, but I saw an article or something we talked about, but it, it was a different name, so I don't know if it was just him under an alias or if the whole CBR that team... That one alias? <laughs> we, we know it's him. Or if the whole CBR team is just told to, you know... <laughs> here's here's a cornucopia... Some great ideas. <laughs> here's a cornucopia of knowledge, yes. Just pick a topic and, you know... Just, just cliff notes, to, uh, whatever has the uh, most views and downloads, yeah. All right, so, yes, kids, if you're just tuning in, yes, of course, Miller May continues where we uh, cover all kinds of work, either written, drawn, or both by, uh, yes, the man, the myth, uh, the legend, Mr. Frank Miller. Uh, So, let's get to Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 15, because there's all kinds of stuff going on here. Too much, but... (laughs) <laughs> oh my god just that just that uh cover just the tentacles holding the uh newspaper uh I don't think those are tentacles uh yeah beat me to it i don't think those are tentacles <laughs> uh and holding a like a cup of coffee or something i, I can't be himself without that first cup of coffee in the morning <laughs> exactly. Uh, the best part of waking up is murder in your cup, right, Lil Hellfire? Relatable, relatable. <laughs> Can't deny it. Uh, Lil, Lil's like, no, gardening. <laughs> Spider Man versus the Punisher. Doc Ock in the I middle. Mean, it, would great, it would be great to have a few extra hands. I think Doc Ock was on to something. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> uh, Sparkly quantum tentacles? Yeah. Right up my alley. Little Hellfire is like, if something, if you need something done right, do it yourself. <laughs> exactly. Alright, so yes. Oh, I have a question. Just how strong is Spider-Man? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Yes, there's that back of the stories if you don't know kids. So, so th- is that king size annual? I'm like just thinking of bed. What, uh, what, how? Do, what size is a king size annual? King size. Is that the only one that was ever king size, or? I don't know. I mean, maybe around this time they were throwing king size on it, just so. Did they not want to use the giant size branding, or they're just like, ah, people are going to say, ah, there's not enough pages for a giant size. Isn't 
that there's like a Marvel, uh, there's an Avengers one. I know. Yeah, I was going to say that. But probably that's from like the 80, 81. Yeah, it's probably around this era. They were using the king size and stuff. That's like when I talked to Kelly Thompson, uh, Capes and Lindsay's episode 296, kids. Uh, she was saying, I guess, in the solicits for Captain Marvel 50, they must have put double size issues. She's like, that's not double size. That's not, don't put that. That's not double size. I forget it was like 10 extra pages or something. She's like, it's not a double size. <laughs> All right. So Amazing Spider-Man Annual 15. Spider-Man, threat or menace? Uh, we all know. He's a, he's a menace. He's a threat. But he's oh. our friendly neighborhood menace and threat. Yes. Writer, Mr. Dennis O'Neill. Put some respect on that. Thank you. <laughs> and of, I know. And of course, penciler, Mr. Frank. Yep. Miller. But we get Klaus Jansen too. So Yes, on inks. Yes. Bob Sharon colorist, Jim Novak letterers, and editor Tom DeFelco. Uh oh. <laughs> nah, it's a it's a, it's a sausage party. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's comics in the eighties. Of course it's a sausage fest. <laughs> Should have been like it's Mr. It's Mr. Tom. Sausage DeFelco. Uh, all right, so Jay Jonah Jameson and Joe Robertson look over a possible bugle layout. JJJ wants to run another Spider Man Threader Menace headline. Ah, just playing the hits. But Raw Robbie notes that readers are getting tired of that and suggests the story that Peter and Ben Yurk are working on. Across town, Peter photographs the great Ter Terhan, a self styled swami who is demonstrating the dim mock, a death touch on a young girl. Before he can reverse the touch, the Punisher kills him. <laughs> oh, Frankie boy. What are we going to do with Frank? Maybe That's been the question forever at this point. Maybe you should have killed him before he used the death touch, perhaps? Babe, hmm. th this is Frank. This is Frank Castle, the Punisher. Incompetent, not good as his job. Mercy bullets or no mercy bullets. <laughs> Uh, There's very few times he's been uh, successful, competent, even coherent, even. <laughs> so, but these comic writers love that death touch because this is like actually the second thing time we talked about the death touch. Lil, do you remember the first time we talked about it? What was the first time? Ah, uh, when we were talking like early Wally West issues. I think it was oh, in his yeah. first annual. Uh huh. So yeah, comic writers love this death touch. You know, it's about kung fu movies from the seventies, which they probably, you know, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people consumed. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of Saturdays spent at those kung fu double features was my understanding. At least that's what my dad said. Depending on where you lived at. All right, and again, once again, I give the warning: uh, beware, young men. Loaf has the death touch. <laughs> I mean, only if you deserve it. Oh, okay, Frank Castle. <laughs> no mercy bullets here, my friend. Oh my. <laughs> you shoot at her, she's gonna shoot back, kids. I don't do Twinkies or toaster strudels. <laughs> uh, uh, Peter slips away and changes into Spider Man and chases after the Punisher. During the fight, the Punisher damages Spider Man's web shooters with well aimed oh, no. shots. No sticky fluid for you, my friend. There's a drop. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Superior puss. Uh, but uh, the, Frank Castle actually thinking ahead and be like, "Yeah, let me shoot. <laughs> let me shoot the web shooters right off his wrist." I mean, it, it, it's Denny. You know, he put some forethought into it. Still, the wall crawler comes after him. Ultimately, the Punisher gets away after stunning the wall crawler with mercy bullets and dousing him with a non-toxic knockout gas. Boo! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> I don't like this at all. Phil, I don't like this at all. <laughs> oh, Danny. Honestly, though, I, I think this Punisher is still better than the current Punisher we have. So, mm -hmm. I can't. I really don't remember the last Punisher story I, in modern times that I actually really liked. I can't think. Eighties, early nineties. Yeah, I was gonna say it had to be before two thousand two. 
I'd say it's probably not past mid nineties. Nah, I'd say I, I like some of the stuff like in the two thousands. Uh, if not anything, just the art. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. Well, now it seems like they. Well, ever since the late nineties, they've been trying. They're like they think they have to tack a gimmick onto him. He's an incompetent mercenary. I whether think. whether he's like an angel or. I like Frankencastle. I don't care what anybody says. Or Frankenca- Frankencastle, or he gets War Machine armor, or now he's part of the hand. Oh, that War Machine armor. <laughs> Choices were made on that one. And then we get out and fight the Avengers. Yeah! I mean, the, uh, the Avengers did need to be knocked down a peg, but I don't really agree with the method. <laughs> I hate the Avengers. I don't know why I hate the Avengers so much. I just do. I have never enjoyed an Avengers story ever. Oh my. Have I, I have I ever mentioned that? I think I've mentioned that. I, I one one, one, oh, one or two thousand times, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not just talking MCU Avengers. I mean like actual Mar- like I have never enjoyed an Avengers story ever. <laughs> Any comic, anything, yes. <laughs> Especially like the classic lineup, like I hate Thor, I hate it all. Like Oh just, my I was like Hawkeye was way too good for them, man. <laughs> I think that's the only time I was really reading them, like, oh it's oh it's a Hawkeye centric story. Okay, I'll, he'll have some common sense at least. <laughs> yeah, when Hawkeye's the common sense oh the my voice God. of reason, you are in trouble. West Coast Avengers when Hawkeye's the leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. It's gonna be a mess, but I'm gonna read it. <laughs> oh my god. That's well that's the whole gag of West Coast Avengers. It's like, yeah, those things are gonna be crazy because if Hawkeye's your leader. Yeah. Which I mean West Coast Avengers is a little different. I mean like classic Avengers just <clears throat> Hawkeye, common sense, he met Mockingbird, and then like a week later they're married. Like literally. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> That's how you know it ain't gonna last, kids. <laughs> now, when Spider Man returns to the scene, the young girl was being carted away by the police as she continues to slowly die. Spider Man is determined to find a way to reverse Terhan's death touch. As Spider Man swings away, Ben York goes to a nearby payphone to call in the story. Who do you think you are, Clark Kent? Back at the Daily Bugle, Peter and Ben are congratulated for the excellent work. The Punisher's kill shot of Terhan makes the front page, which doesn't sit well with Peter, who worries about what will become of the girl. Think of the children! (laughs) At the morgue, the coroner pricks his finger on Terhan's ring and dies. The Punisher finds the body and the poison, but Dr. Octopus attacks him and makes off with Terhan's body. What are you up to, Doc Ock? What are you up to? <laughs> Superior puss! I, I never pegged her for a necrophiliac, but okay. Oh. Not looking good. You're gonna have to fight those allegations for a while, sir. Oh my! <laughs> uh. Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. That, that might be our business. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I draw the line, where that might be my business. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh. I don't think those are tentacles. I think that's the one kink we can all shame, maybe. I don't know. Would, would your next of kin have to consent? <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Uh. Spidey drops into Terhan's office and questions one of his assistants who reveals Terhan's ring was gimmicked with a drug. He and his brother were to deliver to Pier 43. Not to be confused. What, what was that? What is it? Pier 42? The That old shopping place your mom uh, probably bought stuff at. Oh, um, yeah, I forget. Or is it, or is it 49 or what was it? Pier 41? That can't be Pier Oh, maybe. Uh, I thought it was Pier so. Uh. Anyway, if you know, leave a comment oh, in the I want video. It, I want it to be 49 so you say, so close. I think it is Pier 49. No, oh. that's pizza. I, don't, I can't remember, but I know it was a Pier something. 
Yeah. Uh, like all things from our childhood, it's gone. Bankrupt. Toys R Us. Circuit City. No, not Pier 41 Seafood. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, oh. Don't poke the ADD, love. Uh, I know. Let me see the home decor store. Pier uh, one. Oh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I found it. It's Pier one. Wait, uh, they're still in business? Probably in I select locations. Interesting. Or did they scale way back or something? Oh, they might just be online only. Oh, I saw I saw an article yesterday. I guess uh, IKEA is uh, opening a bunch of new locations. Uh, Smaller locations or like actual big full IKEA stores. I oh, I think they said it, it was going to be. I, there was a bunch of them because I, I think they were spending like two point two was a billion or something or million or. Why are but, we being invaded by the Swedish? I don't like it. Because well, they're they being... already ruined our furniture economy. Like, listen. I love a good cheap, you know, engineered wood shelf just as much as the next person, but they, it's a whole thing. I don't want to get into it, but I, I kind of, I kind of cut back on Ikea. Oh, I was going to say, I thought you were funding this. Uh... No, I, I kind of cut back on a lot. Late stage capitalism has really gotten to me lately. Oh. Yeah. Late stage capitalism. Choke that chicken! <laughs> Choke. We're the chickens. Joke's on us. Oh, my. <laughs> Anywho, let's, uh, let's pick it up. <laughs> More upbeat. Please send me the pictures of that underground bunker you're building down there. All right. Uh... Meanwhile, the Punisher's presence at the morgue reaches the newspaper, and the Daily Bugle publishes a front-page story accusing the vigilante of stealing Terhan's body. Oh, they're accusing him of being the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Spidey's totally a necrophiliac. No, the Punisher. They're accusing the Punisher of being the uh, dead body. <laughs> er. <laughs> I mean, after Frankencastle, you know. Oh! <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, oh, no, no. After the current storyline with his wife. Oh, mm, yeah. Oh. Not, not so superior puss. Keeping it on ice. Superior puss! Again, fetish? <laughs> Donkey punch me now, bitch. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the pier, Terhan's brother drops a canister of the poison into the river. The Punisher dispatches himself and follows the canister where he discovers Dr. Octopus's hideout below the water as the villain recovers the canister. And I love he's like making a call to like the mayor and stuff. He's like, oh, the ones will never find me. I'm like, this is at least... <laughs> Ock uses this base, this underwater base, at least two or three times in through throughout Spider-Man lore. So I'm like, how is nobody finding him? He keeps going back to the same damn base underwater. Convenient plot point is convenient, my friend. I guess. With the poison in hand, the doctor calls the mayor and threatens to put the poison in the millions of New Yorkers unless he his ransom is demands. He the Joker? <laughs> Shouldn't the mayor laugh at him? Be like, ha ha ha, jokes on you. You know, what, you know what? You know You know You know how much poisons uh, New Yorkers are exposed to every day. Ha ha. Uh, especially in like the seventies, the eighties, they got asbestos and lead everywhere. And between the river, the air. I mean, come on. Um. Awkward. <laughs> one. Awkward. <laughs> one million dollars. Oh, for, yeah. For, yeah. Watch what you step in and uh. Times Square, kids. There ain't web for it, kiddos. As he is busy on the phone, Dr. Octopus is ambushed by the Punisher. The villain easily ties up the Punisher and he, and he pours a beaker of poison and he pours a beaker of poison into the Punisher's mouth while telling the vigilante that he will be dead within the hour. We can never get that lucky. No. Oh! I'm kidding. Uh, I don't do Twinkies or toaster strudels, so. So, yes, again, Frank Miller's not writing this issue. He's drawing it, but, I mean, on the Daredevil episode, we did, you know, the beast, beast from the hand with, with the milk. Yes, and now we're getting, 
uh, forcibly po- poison uh, down the Punisher's throat. So I think he's a bad influence on Denny. <laughs> I think he's a bad influence on a lot of us. Uh, look at look, you, Ke- Kevin Smith. Look at you, Garth Ennis. <laughs> Go watch that episode if you want to get these references. <laughs> Uh, a whore. <laughs> I mean, oh, man, we can suck it. Uh, suddenly, Spider-Man comes crashing through the wall, cause, causing the hideout to flood. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, yeah. He's like, I am an octopus, kiddo. Like, what do you want? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Cause uh, Doctor Octopus takes this as his cue to like, escape. I'll be leaving now. <laughs> Screw you, Spider Man, and kill him. That's exactly that's exactly the vibes. Doctor, oh my God, can you imagine? I mean, they they'd never get the rights to it, but if they did like a Marvel episode and like Cartman was a uh, doc. <laughs> Coon and Friends rebrand. <laughs> No cow, I said tentacles. <laughs> uh, no, you can't poison the city, fat ass. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, with the poison coursing through his body, the Punisher attacks Spider-Man in a rage. He's trying to find some poor. I'm surprised to see they're not trying to find some poor girl to suck out the poison. Hey, <laughs> it's like, come on, Denny, it'll be fun, man. Oh my! Uh, and then he goes. I don't do Twinkies or toasters. <laughs> come on, it'll come on, it'll be fun. Have the pun, have someone suck the po- uh, poison out. I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. Uh. Oh, thank God we've got scientist Peter Parker this issue though. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, where'd you come from? It's been a while, kid. While fending off the Punisher, Spider-Man reads the, the notes Dr. Octopus kept on the poison. Dodging the Punisher's blows, Spider-Man concocts an antidote and pours it down the Punisher's throat. Once Radish! again, once Radish! again, Radish once, Radish again alert! once again, taking another uh, shot down the gullet. Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> couple of bulls down the gullet. Uh... Thereby restoring his sanity and curing him. Wait, he had sanity? For real. Uh, after webbing up the Punisher to appear, Spider-Man then takes it to the hospital to save the young girl poisoned by Terhan. Yeah, give him the it's old... It's pr- too late. She's dead. Pour, poured it down his throat, then gave him the flip to it. <laughs> Meanwhile, J. Jonah Jameson has once again redesigned the front page to cover the threat made by Dr. Octopus. At that moment, the villain infiltrates the bugle to poison the ink in the printing press, thus killing the millions of people who read the popular newspaper. Having deduced the plan of Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man arrives to stop him. The two battle it out among the printing presses, forcing Spider-Man to save J. Jonah Jameson from danger. I love how they're both complaining. It's like, I didn't want to save you. Well, I didn't want you to save me. <laughs> Much to the publisher's aggravation, Spider Man eventually takes down Dr. Octopus with a single punch. Ah, yes. Give him the old guy Gardner. <laughs> uh, at that moment, the Punisher breaks free of Spider Man's webbing just as the police arrive. Surrounded by cops, the vigilante considers killing them. But since they are on the side of the law, surrenders and allows himself to be arrested. Modern comics would never. <laughs> yeah. I cannot shoot police officers because he runs out of mercy bullets. Huh? As he sits in the back of the squad car, the Punisher muses over how many criminals he will have access to while in prison. Hey. <gasps> so many to kill. It's in their prison purse. Oh my! It's good. it's about to be a couple mercy bullets in the prison purse. It's in his prison purse. I don't think those are mercy bullets. I oh, think the pants come off next. There you go. Oh, he's tapping his way to prison. Tap, tap, tapping my way. Oh yeah, he's definitely going downtown. 
Oh my! Book Dano. Book him, Dano. <laughs> uh, I'm going to prison on principle. I'm going to hold on principle. Uh, uh, back at the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson attempts to take credit for Spider-Man's victory against Doctor Octopus. However, Joe Robertson convinces Jameson to kill the story as the public will fear that the newspaper is still poisoned and no one will buy it. Jameson ultimately goes back to his original Spider-Man menace headline, but these still fail to sell much to Jameson's frustration. Poor old man. Yeah, it's funny because like, like that news vendor is like, yeah, man, it don't sell when you put that on the cover. <laughs> it doesn't... It doesn't Wonder, Wonder Man, am I remembering that right? I mean, the next uh, story in this this one. Um, he is he part of? You mean the oh the the um just, the, just how strong Spider is Spider Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's standing there, but yeah, between Hercules and Iron Man. Okay, yeah, that's probably why I didn't read. Oh my! Oh, Thor's in it too. I think. That's why I, yeah, yeah, it's on the same in that same panel. Yes. I was just like, nah, nah I'm good. Hey, uh, hey, Justin, uh, Namor's, uh, they, we got a shot of Namor there, too, though. Yeah, yeah. My favorite biscuit. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of really cool things in here. Uh, Peter Parker's apartment and then the gallery of Spider-Man's foes was really cool, too. So. I know. It's, it's so funny that they do, do, like, Peter Parker's apartment. It's just like, <laughs> over here we have the cigar store Indian. <laughs> Like, um, Seinfeld's gonna make a reference to that. That's insane. We smoke in peace pipe. That's uh, at Nightwing PDP. Oh, oh, do we, do we have recovered when Punisher breaks out? I don't think so. We can. Yeah, I was just wondering. I feel like we, we did for some reason. Uh, well, I was gonna say, which time? <laughs> well, no, the one in um, Spectacular Spider Man 81. Mm -mm. We can though. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll have another Punisher uh, themed. I mean, I mean, we could do. I was gonna say we could do a Punisher month between this and the Devil, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crossover. Uh, We're gonna cross the streams. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Oh, geez. Uh, Code of Honor three shows that the cop who arrests the Punisher is Jeffrey Piper. I was like, Ew. That's that's all bad on all fronts, my friend. <laughs> oh my! A gallery of Spider-Man's most famous foes: Man Wolf, Jackal, Punisher, and Tarantula. Um, yeah, this is really, really eighties. Oh, this must be the original Tarantula, Anton Miguel Rodriguez. Yeah, how many tarantulas has there been? Three? Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's been, well... Well, yeah, if you count Black Tarantula, because uh, the original Tarantula gets killed, and some other guy puts on his suit. Uh... As you do in Marvel. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, ooh, free, free, free identity. Why not? Nobody will figure it out. Pull, pulling a Mackendale, as we say. Yes. Mackendale. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're a, if you're a cannon fought if you're a cannon fodder pu uh, punching bag villain, oh yeah, if you die, someone's picking up that suit. So, Everybody's so, like, I don't know who this is. Oh, well. so I was gonna say you better watch it. I was gonna say you better watch your ass, shocker. <laughs> you know, surprisingly, he's lived to tell the tale because he's a coward, and that's how and cowards live to tell the tale, man. I we haven't seen the butt shocker lately. I, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. We need to get back to back. We need shocker. We need rhino. I mean, when's the last time we saw a rhino? I mean, not in when's this. When's the last time we've uh, actually gotten Doc Ock in his prime? I think we do need to reboot everything kind of back to normal. I'm I sorry. mean, I, I think what is it like? I think uh, no, Norman needs to go back to being dead. That's <laughs> just how it is. I'm sorry. His time has gone. Make Harry, you know, Harry can be a goblin. Any goblin. At least a moratorium on Norman. Let, you know, let's go a year. Is, it's worse than the Joker at this point. And then it infected everything else. It's like, oh, we're going to have a goblin renaissance. And I'm just like, nobody cares. Spreading those <laughs> goblin. I, 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 I don't 
don't get like I don't get how the Green Goblin became Spider Man's enemy. Like, oh, what you know? It would be like, what's the natural enemy of a spider? Not a goblin. Oh, I think the big the big uh, appeal of Norman was it's like oh, it's his best friend's father. Which is dumb. It should be his best friend. I mean, stick with the classic tropes. You know? Well, well, again, when they did it, you know, they were what high high school or you know early college. Yeah, I and... know, I get it, but it's it, it's time to retool. Well, rethink. they they kind of did that eventually. They made yeah. Harry the goblin, but and it was a terrible story. I mean, no, I'm off of Normie being a goblin because we all, we've all known that kid was on a dangerous road since the day he was born. I mean, Liz, Liz is his mom. Oh Here's yeah, his dad. No, Lilith. They went the more original route of giving Norman or uh, Normie a symbiote, Red Goblin. I know, but still a goblin. <laughs> oh my God, that Red Goblin book is Lilith Hellfire's <clears throat> worst nightmare come to life. It's Normie Osborne as the main character with a symbiote, and he <laughs> this this past issue or two he was fighting Phil Urich. I mean, I, yeah, I can... it's just like, oh my God. Who has been in my nightmares writing books, man? <laughs> it's literally the antithesis, antithesis of everything I stand for. <laughs> this is what she wakes up screaming from, from a dead sleep. All that and new manium. <laughs> yes, exactly. <sighs> all right. Well, speaking of new comics, should we get to the elephant in the room? Uh, more like elephant dung, but... Uh... Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, let's, let's let's do it. I think I've actually pinpointed what is just really difficult, you know? Amazing Spider-Man 24. Can, can I ask you a question, Phil? Yeah. I think this is what has been bothering me. When's the last time Peter Parker as Spider-Man has been competent? I cannot think. Every hmm. single, like, arc in the last... Hmm, 24 issues, baby. Um, he just hasn't been competent. He hasn't been the Peter we know and love. Uh, he hasn't been smart about anything. He's reactive, overreactive at times. Um, he doesn't have a good relationship with anybody. Why should we care about Peter at this point? This Peter. I mean, no wonder you're not getting new readers. I mean, because it's like, the, it's it seems like... I think current Spider Man, they they wish that Stan had never like aged him up and stuff, but it's just like Well he they did wanna, and you they, gotta they, grow up and get over it. They kinda wanna make him relatable to young younger people and for some reason We have it, Miles like they, I know, but they but they think that means making him stupid. So it's like, oh no, no wonder you're not getting new readers because they you know they pick up a book and they think, you know, they're like, Oh, Marvel thinks we're idiots. So Yeah. It's literally, you have Miles, you have Gwen, and you treat those books like, shh, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, and again, like you said, when was the last time we saw Scientist Peter? And it's, you know. Smart Peter. Yeah. Capable and, Peter. And again, I know we're doing it for shock value, but why is he going to Norman? Why can't he build this suit himself? Why can't, you know. Well, again, why did they have, you know, Stark give... Uh, Spider, uh, you know, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, all his tech. Lazy. I know. Lazy. It's I lazy. know. I mean, at least he, you know, at least that was like a teenage kid. This adult Peter Parker, he's built, he's built suits for himself. He's built armor for himself before. It's <sighs> convenient plot point is convenient. No, I, I mean, know. this is based in Brand New Day, so everything, every choice is going to be dumb as hell. That is the biggest thing that tainted Spider-Man. No, I'm serious. That's just no, like, we know. One more day, Brand New Day. I mean, we've never, the, the brand has never recovered from that. Preaching to the choir, brother. I know. I know. But they don't know. They don't seem to know it. They don't seem to get it. It's been 15 years. It's been 84 years. And they... <laughs> feels like it so that old lady was just a liar <laughs> and a bit of a tramp if you ask me <laughs> chances never zero kids uh. like, okay so there's a few things that we uh you know as spider-man fans from a certain time expect to just be baseline and that is peter and mary jane he Mary Jane is basically Peter Parker's lightning rod, right? We can all just agree to that, right? Yeah. 
And they have been fighting that tooth and nail for some reason. I don't get it. Again, there's a certain segment of Marvel higher ups who don't want them together. And I don't know why they think he ages the character or something. And I'm just like, like I keep saying, people get married at 18. Some of these people get married at 18. How does marriage age you up? Yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, Captain America and Fantastic Four couldn't, couldn't save this story, you know? I mean, I, again, I've been reading Spider-Man since I was 10. When I started reading, it was 1988. They were already married. I had no problem with the marriage. You know, as a young kid, I was just like, oh, cool. You know, Spider-Man has a wife. He has someone to come home to and talk to about his day. Exactly. I bruised my knuckles on Shocker's face. Come on. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> yeah, but like that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think they like a lot of these writers. They they it seems like they kind of grew up on the same comics that we did for the most part. Um, so I don't get how, and they should have the same sensibilities that we have, and they should, you know what I mean. And it just it just well, feels weird. Well, I think that's why Brand New Day came about is because you know somebody somewhere in that office was like, oh, I I read Spider Man back in the day. I loved him when he was single. We need to go back to that. And whoever made that choice, I hope they got fired. <laughs> I hope they gave them the old Dan to die to out of DC. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. <laughs> I mean, they rub, they're still rubbing their brand new day over this. I don't care what they say. I think they're not. They still literally are flagrant, flagrantly flaunting it. So, mm -hmm. And it's like, babes, we still haven't forgiven you. Never forgive, never forget. Like, we literally say that every week, basically. <laughs> And kids, this isn't us. I mean, everywhere I go, the internet's in an uproar about this. 228 episodes. I'm pretty sure we've mentioned it at least 225 times. <laughs> I'm maybe, sure. maybe a few less because the Bad Babysitter's Club swings around once a month. So. <laughs> touche, touche. But I, and it, and like I, like I saw the internet bringing this up too. It's like at the end of this story, you know, Peter gets back with Norman's help. Ugh, but, uh, you know, of course, in this uh, other universe, I mean, if time, and time, Peter are time, villain, yeah. time may have passed. Well, well, not even that, but it's just like, you know, when they started the, oh, what did Peter do? You know, it turns out it's nothing. <laughs> they're like, they're like, this is what Mary Jane was mad at him for. It's like, she, again, it's been years. Again, she's she probably lonely, but it's like she's the one who slept with somebody else. She's the one who had two kids with somebody else. And it's like, why is she mad at Peter? Because she, hey. Your mother's a whore! Oh, <laughs> oh somebody's a, uh, I see we're going to the Frank Miller school, Your right? Mother's a whore. Women are unpredictable and they're whores! See, you should be happy we erased your marriage. She's a whore! Your mother's a whore! You know, you gotta bring it around, super connected. So, so oh my. <laughs> we're doing me now? Uh, but, uh. We're doing me now? So, yes, Peter shows up. She has a whole family now, and it's like... The whole family can suck it, basically. That's basically what the internet's been telling them that this last couple of days. The whole family can suck it. It's poor decision-making at this point. Because it's like... I mean, this is like DC levels of floppitude. This, so. is, this is... I mean, again, this is, you know, this like the stuff Nick Spencer did. You know, eventually you're, they're going to have to wind this back, and it's going to, you know, it's going to have to be... Oh yeah, you know the guy hypnotized her, and you know those those aren't her kids. She didn't give birth; those are clones or something. They're robots, Phil. <laughs> They're horny little doom bots. Oh, can you? Uh, not again. My parents were robots. Well, my kids were robots. <laughs> Mark my words: if they roll it back, those kids are cloned as robots. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're eventually gonna have to retcon that. Man, I'm sick of retcons at this point. It's like standing your mess, my friend. It's like Gwen Stacy's kids all over again. No, for real. It's, those are the vibes. I mean, oh my god! I, and again, not, all the brain with it. this, like this is bad, and they should, they should feel that. Uh, and again, I mean, we joke about it, but I mean, they love modern Spider Man. They love to cuckold him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. I mean, uh oh, we got the red flag for the. For the alt right, uh oh. Gwen, Gwen, Gwen had kids. Gwen had kids with somebody else, supposedly, but, but we kind of wreck on that. Now Mary Jane's having kids with somebody else. Uh. Just give us Mayday Parker already. 
<laughs> Jesus. They, I know exactly. They they love the cuckold them. You know all these all these exes having babies with other people. No, still no one, still nobody's touching Dev Whitman. <laughs> nice. I was gonna say, when's when's Felicia having her kids? Jeez. Uh, is that so... is, is that what that is that what they were setting up? It seems like around issue nineteen or twenty, you know, when they go to, when him and Felicia go to that spa and run into Paul and Mary Jane, and it's just like, I think we're were we kind of in the in the Mary Jane Black Cat series where we we just setting up. Oh look, Mary Jane gave Felicia the seal of approval, so she could be the girlfriend now. We're so far past Peter and Felicia though. Mm-hmm. It would almost be a downgrade for Felicia at this point. Oh yeah, I mean she's had so much more character uh, growth Lisa, since. Just bring back they Flash Thompson. Mm-hmm. That's her true love, and you can't change my mind. I'm sorry. Exactly. <sighs> yeah, I I mean I think this is something that maybe new writers can enjoy because I mean if they get rid of that, that's that's like sixty years of baggage gone, you know. Mm-hmm. They can literally just do whatever, <sighs> and they have been doing whatever with Spider Man, like that whole web, oh, yeah. that whole web thing, the web, web of Spider Man. They've been doing whatever the hell they wanted for a long time. It, it just doesn't even resemble the Spider Man I know and love. Like we're, we're not even street level. When's the last time we actually been street level? That's the other thing that gets me. It's like every so often you could do something. You, you, I mean, keep it fresh. Do something outside the box with Spider-Man. But yeah, it's like. He's just uh, been caught up in too many like supernatural shenanigans. And crossovers. and Yeah. I mean, 24 issues. I mean, we've already done an, an X-Men crossover too. We did Dark Unnecessary War. Unnecessary X-Men crossover as far as I'm concerned. And that's the thing. We haven't even just uh, crapped all over the marriage. We were crapping all over Ben Riley too. Again, it's just like it's it just seems like Zeb Wells has like a bet with someone where it's like, well, let me let me show you how many Spider Man things I can f up. Well, this is the breaking point. But like I said, I I've seen some reviews that people actually like this. That they you know it's a it's a really change of pace. Yeah, I mean it's few to few, but not. I mean it's definitely the minority. But maybe they're trying to get rid of the old fans because we complain so much. Yeah, but like I said, you ain't bringing in new fans, though. I don't know what they're doing at this point. This is, Spider-Man is on the way to being Superman. Yeah, but at least with Superman, they brought that marriage back after we bitched enough about it. Well, yeah. How, how many years was it? I mean, it wasn't too many because it's what, what's what? Um, You know, New 52, that got rid of the marriage. And then it's like... It's... Came back in Convergence, but then it didn't to make mainstream to so like free birth or whatever yeah that might have been like what five years or something yeah again spider-man we're at 15 it's like come on well that's because marvel i think they kind of, i think the difference is dc regretted it they really did regret because clark and lois that that's the foundation yeah and we had fought so hard for it and it and it, I mean, it didn't change anything. I mean, them being married because they was were it... so close when they were just together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, again, is it like even if like in the movies or any shows or anything where it's like even if they're not married, you know, Clark and Lois are either dating or like flirting with the idea of dating and stuff. Meanwhile, are they just like, oh no, in all those movies, Spider Man's not married. He can't be married. <laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Nobody cares. See, again, they think their audience is stupid. It's like, oh, well, if he's not married in uh, movie, any movie or TV show, people are going to get confused. Well, and it, I know. I don't get it because, like, in, like I, no offense. I hate MCU only fans. They're the worst. <laughs> well, again, I mean. I, 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 <sighs> and I think that's what's contributing to it, honestly. It's like, oh, Tom Holland and Zendaya can't get married. <laughs> when I when I talked to that guy, the one guy, um. For that, for the Ghost Lord documentary, uh, the one guy he used to own a comic shop, and he said, you know, I think, I think he got out. Well, you know, once the pandemic hit, but he said he's like, he's like the the MCU movie fans weren't coming into the stores to buy the books. I could have told you that. Yeah, they buy the Funko Pops, and that's about it. He said, he said, you know what, 2019, there was a Black Panther movie and Avengers Endgame, and he's like, 
you know, those, you know, Avengers, the Avengers books and Black Panther, none of those books all at boost when those movies were out. Yep. No matter how hard they pretend, it's just not, it's not going to happen. No, no matter how much, how much you draw a uh, Falcon to look like Anthony Mackie, people aren't buying it. Well, you know, the MCU fans are younger and they love to pirate. I'm just going to be real with you. It is so easy to pirate a comic book. Mm-hmm. Why would you go buy it? Why would you leave the comfort of your own house to go buy it? Or they don't they're... understand that, like, like the, the younger fans don't understand that actual culture of, like, community. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of and going that's to your local comic book shop, supporting the small businesses, uh, reading in the, you know, getting the back issues. Like, it's, it's that culture's just not there for them. If, they, if they're even reading the comics. Yeah. I, oh, they're reading them. They're just pirating them. Trust me. Okay. I, I'm a, I, when I was on TikTok, that, that's what the kids love to do so much. Or they love their webtoons, you know? And it's, I mean, there's one thing, like, I literally probably own over a million dollars of comic books. So if I do pirate a comic book, chances are I'm probably still going to go buy the floppy. I just want to read it before I go get it. Yeah. <laughs> And again, yeah, if I ever pirate a comic, it's, it, you know, it, it's ones that yeah, I'm just I, reading it online. It's not that, like I'm like downloading yeah. and printing it out. Yeah. And again, it, it's, it's, it's one I can't find anywhere or one that, exactly. you know, that's like a million dollars or something, you know. So yeah. Our, our and again, cool, like the, the older culture of comic book like readers is completely different now. And I don't yeah. think that they understand that. I, I, I can, really don't. And can you blame the kids four bucks for this? Yeah. Listen, if they would have held the line at like two ninety nine, fine. That that was like this. It's it's an expensive hobby now, and it, it's always been kind of sort of expensive. But like this is getting out of hand. And again, it's like for what though? For something that I don't even care about. I don't want to sound like an old man, although I am. But it's like you know, back in the days when we were paying one dollar, two dollars, we were getting better stories. I'm sorry. We we were. I agree. Listen, I agree. So it's like, you know, the price has gone up and the quality has gone down. It's like, I don't blame people for pirating or not coming back to this. Yeah. I mean, that I'm a, that, not that that's a Spider-Man thing. That's a that's an industry thing. Yeah. It, it's been the shift, and I don't think that they, like, I don't think they have people young enough to actually explain it to them. And that that's another thing about it literally still being an old boys club. Like, for mm-hmm. the most part, like, they don't get the perspective, right? And Spider-Man, Superman, like, all the mainstay characters, Batman even, like, you get that myopic viewpoint still. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. can we get a woman writer? Maybe <laughs> something. We need, a, we need a different point of view at this point. And something needs to be done and shook up. This needs to be shook to the core and returned uh, to basics. I think that they just think the basics are boring, but the basics is what we want. I mean, I we mean. We haven't had the basics in so long, and <laughs> it's just like and I, I mean, think that's why Spider-Man Homecoming did so well I mean literally they returned him to being a teenager we're we're getting a best friend and a girlfriend like read the room we we want that <laughs> I mean the, I mean the basics back in the day is when you were selling the most amount of issues uh you think they would try to get back to that baseline but I don't think they care about the comics I think they're just I think they're trying to ruin the comics brand because they're tired of being a publisher Disney doesn't want to publish comic books anymore Maybe, but I mean, I'm again, I miss the days when we'd swing by the bank and shockers trying to break in. Yeah, I, I do miss a good classic bank robbery. Mm-hmm. Or, Even or Doc at- Ock has kind of outgrown that whole white suit bank robbing phase, too. Unfortunately, <sighs> I know because because he is uh, he is supposedly showing up uh, in issue 27 and 28, I think. And it's like, yeah, he's not wearing the white suit. I'm like, where's my white suit auto? Yeah, like, I mean, the more change the more things stay the same like i guess like that that particular doc Ock probably isn't everybody's fancy but i don't know i'm just kind of sad maybe, maybe like i said i feel like i'm aging out of comics because these these the net the new guard of comic book writers i don't know they just don't inspire me anymore i get it because it seems like as you grow like a lot of our favorite comics regress yeah and then like a lot of our favorite writers are also like dead or retired so exactly but it's like yeah and it's like again like like we made made the point this episode it's like when's the last time we had smart peter parker Mm -hmm. it's been so long i mean i'm not saying he he shouldn't have any troubles and he shouldn't be able to fix he shouldn't be able to fix every problem but again he's small simple things like building a suit ain't no way 
ain't no way he should have had to go to Narnia. That's just how this whole That is thing... convenient plot point is convenient if I've ever seen. It's lazy. I know. I, I it get is it. lazy. He did that just to get to the point where he needed Peter to be with Norman. And that's just lazy. It does if it doesn't make sense, it's lazy. It's a MacGuffin. I mean, yeah, the the whole thing with Norman is just for shock value, you know that. Yeah, of course. I, but again, this is how this is this is the whole thing we built the whole franchise on, you know, Amazing Fantasy 15. He's building his own web shooters. He's he's do, he's somewhere making listen, his I own think a lot of these writers are just lost. They just want to put the they're giving it the bend stream. I just want to put my stamp on it. I don't care about the the consequences of that and what that means for the brand, for the fans. I'm going to do what I want to do. Marvel DC. And you can't stop me. Antonio could have stopped this. I, 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 they didn't. They, nope. they, they published it. So. Marvel DC. I, I will throw it out there. I, hell, I will consult for free. All I would just like is a little blurb in the issue, but like, oh, special thanks to Phil Page of the Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. <laughs> but I'll help you. Me and me and Lilith can help you write your ship. You know. I can fix DC. They just don't want to talk to me. And I get it. I, I bash them. I've bashed them for what a decade now. <laughs> I've been right every time though. Again, like it's like what I said, I can help you rate the Spider Man ship, kids. Just give me a call. It's right down there. Uh but because it you have nothing to lose. Like again, if it works, hey, your 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 stuff is saved. And if it doesn't, you can just say, oh, amateurs. Yeah. Well, which is what it feels like just writing this book at this point. No offense as I was, but like I said, I've been really drained reading modern comic books. He was like the Spider Man filling guy. He ain't he, he's not the full time but he 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 shouldn't be the Spider Man full time guy. Well, we we've come to find that out. He at least needs a co writer, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's the thing. The the, the story he wrote that uh, this whole stupid the mentioned thing is based on it was from brand new day and that, that was what that was the thing it was rotating cast they did an arc they were out the next guy was in and they, they kind of did that with beyond and i think they should have kept doing that and that way we wouldn't have got stuck where we are right now they should do that for a while until they they figure out to take that you know do that for like a year and then have you know the right the readers can vote and be like you know what i liked you know writer b's take the best make him the regular him or her the regular writer yeah I, we, we definitely need a fresh perspective um, from Spider-Man. I, I am just so sick of the old guard at this point. I don't know what to do. And he's not even the old guard. He's like the mid guard. Like, we need... I, I, don't, I, don't, I think we need somebody from the past to kind of write the ship, and then we can pass it on to, like, a new... Like, because I'm all for, like, new blood being in the comic book industry. That's what it's all about, passing the torch. But it's like, these guys don't even want to pass the torch and teach these younger guard anymore. It's kind of crazy. You know who we need to write the ship, and then we can bring in a new writer to keep it going? Oh, you know what we do? What? Oh, we got to go 90s, baby. With Mark Bagley art, you bring in J.M.D. Mateus for a while. I'm down for that. Definitely down for that. Or hell, if if you can bring in a few 90s writers. <laughs> oh, a 90s rotating cast, bro? Uh huh. Not right. That would get numbers up on the book for sure. Rotating nine nine these writers at least long enough to write the ship, you know, set the direction, and then you can bring in somebody new. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I am all for like bringing new blood into the comic book uh, industry. It needs it desperately because we can't keep depending on the same people. And then once they get their heads too big and figure I can do anything, you know, they go the Beatles yeah. route. I'm bigger than Jesus. Oh no, baby. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how his health is doing, but, you know, yeah, bring in Jamie Jamie Mate- Mateus, and again, I don't know if his health is the best or not, but Peter David, uh, yeah. there's 90s guys, there's, we still got 90s writers, let's bring them in while they're still here. Yeah, definitely, I, I mean, R.I.P. Denny, that would have been a good one, too. Mm-hmm, oh, yeah. Yeah. I just like I said, modern comics is just kind of really draining me. I enjoy when we do our old issues and stuff, and we can laugh and we can, you know, point out the silliness. Like I, I think comics are afraid to be silly. They want to be so serious now. I know why so but they serious. They don't have any. They don't have anything to say. I feel like comic books don't have anything to say anymore. And again, nobody it's... wants to be political. Everybody just wants it. Like, and they fight for fifteen pages. Like that's just kind of what it feels like at, at right now. And they make the... stupid, stupid choices for the rest of the pages. 
is it just Warner's and, and Disney and everyone has ruined it with the you know the big companies and it's just like remember when we were just comic com you remember when Marvel was just Marvel and they can do whatever they wanted? Well, Stan was a bad businessman kind of, but uh <laughs> you know, no offense, maybe maybe, maybe he rescued. Yeah, but uh, but but again, you know, if they wanted to take risks, they could take risks. Like I yeah, mean Yeah, when you're not beholden to shareholders, definitely. Um that's kinda like the as a toy collector, you kind of see the difference in quality from, say, a Mattel who has shareholders and MGA who doesn't, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to get there, but it's like, you know, like that three issue uh, Spider Man, you know, when Harry gets hooked on drugs, you know? Yeah. Back in the day, they weren't doing that. And Stan's like, we'll do it. Even if we're going to put the comic code on it, we ain't, we're doing it. Yeah. The comics code. I mean, we, we lived through that. Like, it, it ended not that long ago. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, boy. We live to see the end of the common code. That's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. I think they're like, hmm, I don't think anyone cares about the comics code. And was that, that was probably costing them to do, run it through the comics code right there. Like, F it. We'll just, I don't think anyone they noticed. That. <laughs> no one noticed. All right. And I know you're going to roll your eyes, but Hallow's Eve number two is out. Mm -hmm. My friend of the show, friend of the show, Erica Schultz. But, uh, uh I mean, it's kind of interesting because, like, you know. I just, Janine, I'm not reading it because I'm just not J interested in the character. Janine infected this uh, security guard or when she broke into this bank. Uh, he basically got one of her masks stuck on him. Now he's like a werewolf. A werewolf? Yeah. Huh. Weird. Yeah, yeah, because, like, the different masks give her. Because, like, some of the masks, it's like she has, like, a vampire mask and stuff. And. But she's like, you know, I infected this guy. I got to track him down and like help him. Cool. But the but it, the the Beyond Corporation is in this. So. Of course they are. Yes. <laughs> if you know, you know. Of course they are. Um, but I do. Can I just shout out Hellcat number two? Because yes, that was a good book, and you should be reading it. Yes, I've been enjoying uh, Hellcat. Yes. Shout out to uh, Christopher Cantwell, uh, the writer, and Alex Lenz on the art. I I, I, I like Patsy. I'm glad that they remember she exists. <laughs> and I kind of like this new fresh take. So Yeah, Christopher Cantwell must like her because, yeah, this spins out of his Iron Man stuff where she was yeah. up here. Yeah. So, yeah. <sighs> right, kiddo. Give him the homework, I guess. Yes. All right. Yes, we did. We did the. We did the Miller May issue. We poo pooed on Amazing Twenty Four. It's not even poo poo. It's just like as a really long time. Like, uh, you know, you either die a hero, or live live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Well, I'm the villain, baby. I'm Lex Luthor, <laughs> and I'm out for blood at this point with these comic book writers. <laughs> I mean, it's not even being a villain. It's just what you like. And again, I mean, Marvel. I'm literally a lifelong fan. I'm 45 years old. I'm. Oh my god. I've been reading since I've been 10. So I've been reading it over 30 years. And yeah, Spider. Oh. I mean, when Brand New Day started, I was like, uh, I, I almost quit the Spider Man books. I'm just like, I would read it every month and go, okay, next. I mean, I'm not opposed to taking five five years off uh, from new comic books. Like, I, I took a, I took a year off. Um, I'm still not really reading Batman books. I'm just like, we need some. We need our. We need our Spider Man back. We need the marriage. We, you know. We need Mayday last... at this point. We need we need Hell. a whole new upheaval. Hell, when's the last time we got a good J. J. Jonah Jameson tirade? Come on, <laughs> we kind of neutered Jameson once we had him, you know, find out Peter Spider Man. And that, that's how it's gonna go. That's every single that that that's the trope. And it's like, ah, oh, did we really want him to find out? But at least that's character. I mean, I mean, even if you don't like it, at least that's some character development, you know? Yeah. And we haven't really had character. Development but then they don't for do the not characters in forever either. But then they don't do anything with it. Well, because they wrote themselves into a corner, like, oh, we we just did it for the shock value. But no, like now, we're now we're stuck. They they don't do a lot with like the supporting cast. It's like you know, oh, we saved them. You know, we we sacrificed that marriage at the cost of Aunt May. Well, then what for the what? hell did we? For what? Like, like I, I it's, at this point, I have a beef with Aunt May. Like, I I want that old bat to die at this point. She doesn't even do the feast center anymore, or any of that. So Thank it's like, God. what's the point? I know, but at least that was at least that was a plot point. At least that was something for her to do. Now it's like. In, tw in the last 24 issues, when, how, how often have we seen her? Three times, maybe? Maybe. And, and not, you know, maybe for like a page or two here or there. 
again, they don't get the basics in the print. I like. I, I mean, I guess if you just want to get do away with like, if you want to rewrite a new status quo, you're gonna lose a lot of readers. You just you just are. Mm-hmm. And this book hasn't been doing that great. Oh, you mean the you other mean... Spider Man book's been doing pretty good though. However. Oh yeah, I, I saw people. So when that's I... kind of weird <laughs> that they haven't kind of figured that one out. It, it, what this? What the uh, Dan Slot one? Yeah. Yeah. And it's Dan Slot. I mean, honestly, we know that the art is. Yeah, that's cool. when you know they're in trouble. Is when I prefer a Dan Slot book over the main book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're in trouble, kids. <laughs> we are in trouble. Yes, for my personal taste. Yeah, that's when you know there's something wrong. <laughs> Something's rotten in Denmark. <laughs> And I saw people even like, you know, reading those JMD Mateus flashback miniseries being like, what? Yeah. Yeah. See, this is why we prefer this to the rainbow. So, yeah, even those were getting bigger praise, of, which, of course, it's JMD Mateus. But yeah, it's I was like, going to say, uh, that's a no brainer. But yeah, but they're getting. The, yeah. So, yeah, you know, you're in trouble when every other Spider-Man book you're putting out is getting more praise than the main book. So, yep. Maybe they all um, listen. Maybe not. But. Mom's got a clock in the work, so. <laughs> okay, so, all right, sorry. All right, kids, so yes. Next th- next time we're going to... Uh, you know, I got to go to the job I get paid for, Phil. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> next week we'll do our last Miller May here with uh, Marvel Team Up 100, which I believe uh, Frank Miller is maybe the co-writer on, maybe. But yes, we'll we'll get to that. And then, yes, in two weeks we will do that... Um that drug story, that controversial one we were talking about. Yes. Everybody from... loves cocaine. <laughs> At least Harry Osborne, amazing Spider-Man 96 through 98. Uh, those classics. And then yes, the bad baby slitters club will be back uh, with Spider-Man team of five and Spider-Man unlimited 14. Oh, we're so close to the end of that nineties clone. Suck. <laughs> Ray's mind is going to be blown. <laughs> what the F? <laughs> All right, kids. So, yes, send us your thoughts. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Send us your thoughts on Amazing 24. I mean, are, do you agree with us? Are, are we, we, too, are we old fuddy-duddies who just don't get it? I feel like I'm an old fuddy-duddy who doesn't get it because <laughs> he's always with somebody that says they like it. And I'm just like, how? How long have you been reading book, comic books? Spider-Man is not your favorite character. <laughs> Yeah, I think anyone who I see defend like the current run is basically someone who's like, yeah, I haven't been reading long. So, uh, yeah. 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 So they don't know better. All right, kids. And yes, find all of the Capes and Lunatics uh, episodes, social media, merchandise, Patreon. All of it is at tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. And you can't find Lilith anywhere, so suck it. <laughs> Uh, I, I might be back on social media in a year, but it's really nice not having. I'm I'm sorry, Phil. You have to be the social media manager, but it's, okay. it's nice. And again, kids, yes, peace if, and quiet, man. If you want to talk to Little Hellfire, you can find me on Facebook. Okay. What? You can Facebook. find me on Facebook. Yeah, she might answer you once a month. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, kids. Thank you for joining us for another episode of uh, Miller May. Yeah. I think Frank Miller got off light this episode because uh, Amazing Spider-Man 24 was here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had other fish to fry at that point. Frank Miller and Frank Castle got off light this episode. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think we roasted them a little. Light, lightly toasted him. Lightly, yes. All right, kids. Yes, come back next week uh, for the last middle of May of Ultimate Spider-Cast. Marvel team up 100. But until then, swing on back. Thwip, thwip. Whip it good. Careful not to break the web shooters.